welcome back to our channel. In this video, we will talk about the Article 6 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution, the Legislative Branch. Let's start with the definition of legislative power. It is the power to make, alter, and repeal laws. Here are the classifications of legislative power. Original, Delegated, Constituent, and Ordinary. Let's first talk about the original power. This is possessed by the people in their sovereign capacity. The original legislative power of the people is exercised via initiative and referendum. We have already talked about these terms in the previous videos, so please check it out. Second, Delegated Possessed by the Congress and bodies by virtue of the Constitution. Third, Constituent the power to amend or revise the constitution. Last, ordinary, the power to pass ordinary laws. The legislative branch is vested in the Congress of the Philippines. It is a bicameral body. This means that it is composed of two houses. Let's take a closer look at the Philippine Congress. The upper house is called Senate. It is composed of 24 senators and headed by the Senate President. On the other hand, the lower house is called the House of Representatives, which is composed of not more than 250 members. But the number may be increased by the law as the population grows, and at least 20% of it shall be for the list representatives. The House of Representatives is headed by the Speaker of the House. Now, raising the membership of the House may be done through reapportionment. This process results in the creation of new districts and provinces. This must be done by Congress within three years after the return of the census in order to ensure that proportional representation is preserved. Now, let's discuss the types of congressmen. There are two types of congressmen the district representatives and the party list representatives. The district representatives represent a particular congressional district of the country, while the party list representatives represent the minority sectors of the population. Republic Act No. 7941, otherwise known as the party list system, mandates that there should be one party list representative for every four legislative district representatives, or 20%, of the total number of House of Representatives. Here are the qualifications of a senator. First, a natural-born citizen of the Philippines. Second, at least 35 years old. Third, can read and write. Fourth, a registered voter. Last, a resident of the Philippines for not less than two years before the election day. Term office, six years. Term limit, a senator cannot serve for more than two consecutive terms, but he may run for re-election after a break or interval. Next, here are the qualifications of the members of the House of Representatives. First, a natural-born citizen of the Philippines. Second, at least 25 years old on the day of the election. Third, can read and write. Fourth, a registered voter in the district he seeks to represent. And last, a resident of such district for at least one year, immediately preceding the day of the election. Term office, three years. Term limit, members of the House of Representatives cannot serve for more than three consecutive terms. Now take note of these numbers. First, 25-35. 25 is the minimum age of members of the House of Representatives, while 35 is the minimum age of Senators. Next, 63. 6 is for the 6-year term office of Senators, while 3 stands for the 3-year term office of members of the House of Representatives. Moving on to the election. There are two types of election. First, is what we call the regular election. The 1987 Philippine Constitution states that unless otherwise provided by law, the election of the members of the Congress is on every second Monday of May. The next type is what we call special election. 
This is an election that was supposedly held with the regular election but was delayed. For example, there is a war going on in one of the places in Mindanao, and the regular election cannot be held, so it will be moved to another day. A special election will also be held to elect a new official after the predecessor left office. For instance, Senator Georgia died because of a car crash. An election will be made to elect a new senator for the vacant position, but the one elected will sit only for the unexpired third. Next, Salary The salaries of senators and members of the House of Representatives shall be determined by the law. Here is a rule on salary increase. No increase in their salaries shall take effect until after the expiration of the full term of all the members. For example, if the present Congress increase the salaries of their members, the increase shall take effect to the next members of the Congress. Next, let's talk about session. There are different kinds of session. First is what we call the regular session. The Congress shall convene once every year on the fourth Monday of July for its regular session. Unless a different date is fixed by law, they shall continue to be in session for such number of days as it may determine until 30 days before the opening of its next regular session, excluded of Saturdays, Sundays, and legal holidays. Next is what we call the special session. The Congress is called anytime to consider some urgent and national concern. Last is the executive session. In some rare cases, the Congress or the President may call for a secret or closed-door session when matters of national interest are to be discussed. Another important topic in Article 6 is quorum. When we say quorum, it is the required number of members of each house to be present in order to transact business during its regular or special session. Here is the rule. No law can be passed or a legislative function discharged unless the quorum is reached. In determining the quorum, normally, one half plus one is the quorum. Under our constitution, a majority of each house shall compose a quorum to do business. It is also important to remember that members who are abroad, suspended, or otherwise prevented from participating are not counted. Only those who are in the Philippines and whom the Congress has coercive power to enforce its authority and command are counted. Moving on to the adjournment in absence of quorum. In the absence of a quorum, a smaller number of members may postpone sessions from day to day. The present members can also issue orders for the arrest of the absent members and choose an acting Senate president or acting speaker as an emergency measure. Next, Discipline and Punishment The Constitution grants each house broad powers to discipline its members who are physically, mentally, and morally unfit. First is what we call suspension. The Congress can suspend a member with the concurrence of two-thirds of all of its members. Second is what we call expulsion. The Congress can expel a member with the concurrence of two-thirds of all of its members and shall not exceed 60 days. Now let's talk about the Legislative Journal. It is the official record of what is done and passed in the Legislative Assembly. The primary purpose of Legislative Journal is to provide the public a record of the proceedings of the Congress and at the same time enable the people to know easily how their representatives fulfill their duties. Next, Rules of Procedures. These are the rules made by lawmaking bodies to regulate the manner of conducting its deliberations. The election of officers and penalties to be imposed on members are some of the subjects of the Rules of Procedure. Last is Adjournment. During the sessions of Congress, Either House may not adjourn for more than three days or to some other place without the consent of the other. This rule in adjournment 
prevents either house from delaying or holding up the work of legislation. That's the end of this episode. Part 2 will be uploaded soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. If you have friends, please share this video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.